what we're going to be looking at here is the LIFO retail inventory method. And we're going to be looking at stable prices where we don't have any price increases or decreases. They're just stable or constant for the period here. And what we mean by LIFO, that's the last in or the first out. The most recent purchases are uh, sold first here. And we're going to be looking at a retail operation. So let's look at our example here. We're going to have some costs here. And then we're going to have some retail prices. And what we have to do here is we have to determine what our ending inventory here is at the end of the year here and once we determine at the retail price here once we determine that then we can go in and we can determine our ending inventory at LIFO cost here so let's look at our example here uh, we're gonna what we have to do is we have to come up with this ratio of the cost to retail price here and we do that here by starting out with our purchases during the period here and uh, they're gonna be at a we have a cost here in those purchases and then that's what we paid for them and then this is the retail price that's what they're worth when we charge our customers or that's what these purchases would be worth here and what I, the point I want to make here is that we also have some beginning inventory here that was the carryover of the a year 20 x1 uh, that was the ending inventory at 20 x1 it becomes the beginning inventory here at 20 x2 now using this LIFO retail method we we aren't going to be looking at this beginning inventory when we have to calculate our ratio of our cost to retail here. That can't be included. So let's go and look at what we've done here. We had our purchases for the period here, and then we have to add in any markups we have here, again, to our that would be included in our retail price, and we'd have to deduct any markdowns here. That is would reduce our retail price here. So looking at our example here, we would just sum our purchases plus our markdowns, our markups, and our less our markdowns, and we come up up with the uh, totals here for our inventory here uh, both at the cost here and the retail price but this excludes the beginning inventory so we have a cost here of 693,000 and we have a retail price here of $990,000 so our ratio of our cost to retail would be just a division here 693,000 divided by 990,000 gives us a 70 percent ratio here now uh, just go in and we total our, this would be the total amounts including our beginning inventory, just the 693000 plus this $54,000 cost here gives us our, at cost, our ending inventory is $747,000. And then uh, for the retail price, again, we include this beginning inventory here of 90000 add that to the 990000 we come up $1,080,000 here. Then we have our net sales for the period. Well, we'd be subtracting them. In this case, it was 9 168,000. So we come up with our ending inventory here at retail at 20x2. That's the end here of 20x2 to be $112,000. Now, you can see here the $112,000 is greater than the uh, beginning inventory here at $90,000. So when we're using this LIFO inventory method here, we set up these inventory layers. So let's look at them here. Um, our beginning inventory here, uh, 20x2, we have a layer here coming over from, uh, being carried over here from 20x1, that's $90,000. Now you can see here the difference. Our ending inventory was greater than our beginning inventory, so we established another layer here for 20x2. The difference, 112000 less our 90000 gives us an ending inventory layer here of 22000 and that's for 20x2 here. So let's go and let's see how we calculate our ending inventory here at LIFO cost. So what we have to do is we take our ending inventory here at the retail price, that was that $112,000 here, and that would be uh, ending inventory here at 20x2 here, and there it's comprised of two layers here, uh, $90,000 here from the beginning inventory here, plus 22, uh, that was the beginning inventory, or that was the layer here from 20x1 here of $90,000. And then we added this layer here in 20x2 because we had greater inventory uh, than we started with here. So we ended up with $22,000 worth of extra inventory here over our beginning inventory. That was the $112,000 here uh, amount here, ending inventory, less the $90,000 in that beginning in a layer here. That gives us $22,000. So what we would do in this case, you can see just summing them up here, you get a total of $112,000 here, including both of those layers. Now to determining our ending inventory here at life of cost, we take this cost to retail percentage here. So remember here for 20x1, we had to calculate our cost to retail 
percentage based on our beginning inventory, and that was at 60%. Now, you would take that here times your $90,000, and you'd get up $54,000, your ending inventory here at our LIFO cost. And then that's for the 20X1 layer, or the beginning inventory layer. Now that for that extra inventory layer that we added here for 20X2 to 22,000, you take that times 70% here. Remember, we calculated, let's go up and look at it here. We calculated our ratio to cost to retail here at 70% here, uh, based on our purchases and our markups and markdowns here for the period. But they didn't, it excluded our beginning inventory. So remember, here that layer uh, was uh, yeah, cost retail percentage was 70 percent times 22,000 gives us $15,400 so total amount here our ending inventory at LIFO cost is $69,400 so our beginning inventory here in 20x3 would be comprised of these two layers and then again that's for their ending inventory at LIFO cost the $54,000 here plus the $15,400 and you can see respect 15,400 comes uh, would be for the 20x2 layer 54,000 here is for the 20x1 layer so okay so that takes care of our first case here where we had our ending inventory was greater than our beginning inventory here the you can see that the beginning ending inventory was greater than the beginning inventory so what we would do here now we come up with our second case here where we're going to go through all these calculations that we let's go up here we're going to go through all these calculations that we've done here and it won't be the same numbers but let's just say uh, we're going to come up with their ending inventory here on 20x3 it's not it's going to be uh, say a hundred thousand dollars here let's go look at it Okay, we're, our ending inventory here on 20x3, let's just say we've gone through all those calculations that we've done and we come up with our ending inventory to be $100,000. Now remember, uh, our ending inventory here on 20x2 becomes our beginning inventory here on 20x3. So uh, this $112,000 becomes our beginning inventory here on 20x3. So what we've ended up here with, we've calcul we've through our calculations, just say we've come up with our ending inventory here at retail prices of $100,000 for 20x3, but we started out with a beginning inventory here of $112,000. So you can see during the year here, or for the 20x3 period, we used up more inventory than we we had to use some of our beginning inventory, and it would be the difference here: um, 100,000 uh, subtract that from the 112,000 our beginning inventory. We have a difference here of. Uh, uh, $12,000 worth. So let's look at how we handle that here. So our ending inventory on uh, say we uh, at 20x3 was $100,000 and it would be comprised here of these layers. See uh, we have this 20x1 layer here of $90,000 but this 20x2 layer well that has changed because we started out with $22,000 here in that 20x2 let's see it we had $22,000 worth of it here but we ended up with um, we had to account for the usage of $12,000 worth. We had the $22,000 here, uh, less uh, we're going to have $12,000, the difference here between $112,000 and $100,000. So that gives us uh, $10,000 here. We're gonna, for our 20x2, we're going to have used uh, $12,000 worth of the uh, layer that we had here at $22,000. So we are going to end up here with $10,000 here for 20x2. So we go through the same calculations again here. This cost to retail percentage again for a 20x1 layer it was 60% here and then say for the 20x2 layer let's say we calculated here would be 70% so uh, multiplying those out here we're going to get our ending inventory LIFO at cost here 20x1 of $54,000 same as we had up before here but the 20x2 layer because it was reduced by that $12,000 amount we're going to the uh, multiplication here 70% times 10,000 gives us $7,000 here so our ending inventory at LIFO cost here would just be the sum of the 54,000 plus 7,000 gives us $61,400. So you can see here um, we have two layers here again in our beginning inventory and that would be our beginning inventory carried over into uh, the next year here 20x4. It would be the $54,000 here plus the $7,000. So you can see here we looked at two cases here. The first case is where we had uh, our ending inventory here was greater than our 
beginning inventory and then we apportion that out here by looking at the different layers here so we are added a layer because the beginning inventory here was greater than the uh, or the ending inventory is greater than the beginning in inventory so we added a layer here so 20x1 we had one layer here for 90,000 20x2 we had added a layer here of $22,000 now um, we looked at the case here. We didn't go through the calculations, but just we assumed here that we had an ending inventory here at 20x3 of $100,000. So you can see that was less than the beginning inventory that was carried over here to tw from 20x2 into 20x3 of $112,000. So we used $12,000 worth of that beginning inventory that was carried over. So we had to apportion it out here again to these layers here. And when you're doing these layers here, you the final inventory well what you have to do is you start with the most recent layer here so uh, because of the LIFO uh, in this case the 20x2 we had to account for that $12,000 difference so we, we start out with the most recent layer here the 20x2 layer and we reduce that here by $12,000 from $22,000 down to $10,000 and had we had we would just proceed in that direction. We would, had we had a greater amounts here, we'd have to use, say we used up all the 20x2 amount here, say it was greater than $22,000, the difference here between the beginning and ending, then you would have to start using up your 20x1 layer. But you can see here, remember just when you're going through these things, just remember you have to determine your cost to retail percentage uh, and based on whatever layer it's coming out of. So remember cost to retail percentage has to come out of the specific layer you're working with and then let's go up here and review this again here when you're losing using this life or retail method you have to isolate out, isolate out your beginning inventory here and uh, and you can't include that here when you're doing your ratio of your cost to retail when you're in for the current period here so and let's just look it up that again here your markups and markdowns apply only to the goods purchased during the current period and not to the beginning inventory so when you're doing your um, cost your cost ratio here remember that for this LIFO method here just apply it only to the current purchases and current park downs and park ups mark ups when you're use uh, determining your cost to retail ratio and then uh, then again just to review here uh, once you determine your ending inventory here then you have to look to see uh, in the next and for the next period you have to look to see if you've used more inventory than or if you added a layer or if you had to subtract out from one of the current layers here when you determine your ending inventory here at your LIFO cost. Okay, to cover a point here that I missed and I may not have made the calculation, when we're determining our cost to a retail percentage here and when we're, when we're looking at this beginning inventory, we isolated it out here from the current purchases for the period. Our beginning inventory to determine our cost to retail ratio, in this case we would take uh, the cost here of 54000 and divide it here by the retail price of 90,000 and we came up with our cost to retail ratio here of 60%. But in either case here, remember when you're you have to determine your cost to retail ratio here for whatever that beginning inventory is comprised of and I just use this cost here our price um, based on what was shown here. And then just remember here our ratio to co our cost to retail here would be uh, different here. We have to do it for the purchases, for the markups and the markdowns and we exclude the beginning inventory for the current period here when we determine our cost to retail ratio. So that's just to uh, cover what I may have missed here in our clarity here when we have to determine our prior, our prior year's cost to retail ratio in this case.